Well, hello. Uh, another live video and Thursday night, as promised, I have done a 7 p.m. start instead of a 9 p.m. start because people give them feedback that they like a little bit earlier. So I'm going to give it a shot. Now, I have to be a little fast today because I didn't check with Mikey first and I've double booked the room at this time. So I'm going to do my little video and then scoot so that Mikey can come on in and uh, do some stuff he had planned. All right, so today I want to talk to you about um, zippers with a tab. Now, I love making zipper pouches. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. It's something you can make that's quite useful and satisfying, and you can do it in a, you know, literally a few minutes, as you'll see tonight. Um, but the one thing about a zipper pouch that can be quite tricky is when you take your zip to the very edge and go to the seams, when you turn your pouch out, this can sometimes look a little bit nubby. It can be a little bit thick and awkward. So I'm gonna show you how to resolve that today using a tab zip quite a simple process but I'm hoping the end result is something like this so that the zip itself goes into a little tab and then that tab goes into the side seam cool cool all right so I'm gonna make a very small thing but the technique I'm teaching you tonight you can make on any size thing large or small you can just re size it to suit you um, and you'll need for tonight I have got just an ordinary little dress zip. So a little size 15 centimeter dress zip. Um, depending on what size you make, you always want your zip to be bigger than the thing you are making. So we want our zip to stick out quite a bit either side of the project. So I'm actually gonna make quite a small project, so I need a small zip. If you're doing something quite large, we also sell continuous zip by the meter, so you can actually do the zip any size you want, not just what you can buy off the shelf. So I have my zip and we're gonna go ahead and take these tags off here, like so. Right, Joe. all right. So, um, listen guys, I'm really sorry, but I'm having, no, yes, no. Well, Facebook told me it was cutting out. If it keeps cutting out, I'll stop and do it again uh, tomorrow or something. So signal keeps coming up, signal lost. Okay, so where was I going? Okay, so you'll need a zip. And what I've got here is some ordinary patchwork fabric. Not ordinary, it's lovely patchwork fabric. But if I zoom down a little bit, I have just treated the back of that fabric with some of my favorite weft products. So it gives the fabric just a little bit of something, something, but it doesn't make it particularly thick or bulky. So I have treated some fabric that I'm going to use for the zipper tabs with weft, and you will need four bits usually about two inches by two inches. So it needs to be bigger than the zip. So wider than the zip and where it sticks out in the end, you'll probably find two inches is plenty. You'll understand more about sizing as we go on. So I have four pieces of fabric, about two inches by two inches treated with my weft. Now I've also got some fabric for the body of the bag. This will be the back of the bag. And this is again a piece of patchwork fabric treated with weft on one side and some ordinary fabric untreated for the lining. And then exactly the same measurements here, repeated but cut in half. Cool? Cool. And that's it. You'll also need a zipper foot for your sewing machine, some pins, or probably even better for tonight, some wonder clips, which I got a ton of here, some of these little wonder clips and you'll need a fabric marking pen. And I think that will do the job. All right, let's get stuck into it. So, first of all, you wanna go ahead and pull the sticker off of your zip. Now, if your zip has nylon teeth, which is what we would use for this sort of project, you can sew through these teeth. But to be safe, one of the best things to do is probably put a denim needle in instead of a normal needle, just so I can get through that slightly thicker nylon zip okay. What you need to be mindful of is this little metal stopper here. So we're going to work with this end first so that we don't forget it. So you're gonna get your zip and open it to about halfway, put it down, check. All right, so the next thing we want is our little bits for our tab. And they are here. Let's see if I can reposition that so you can see a bit better. Indeed, all right. So we're going to push the zipper together like so and using one of our wonder clips, we're just going to hold those zipper ends together. Remember this pull is right down this side here. And then you are going to take one piece of the fabric treated with the weft 
another piece. You're going to put them right sides together, but you're going to put the zip between them and you are going to line them up just below the little metal stopper. Cool, put one there and put one underneath. So they're lined up facing each other, nice and square, so perpendicular to the zip here. So it's nice straight up and down, right angle here to the zip. A little bit of the metal tab sticking out and the fabric sort of evenly distributed either side of the zip. Remember, it's wider than the zip. It's giving us plenty of room to make a mistake. Not that you will. And then you're going to go and get a pin and pin. Now, wonder clips are great, but for this sort of precision for what I'm doing here, I like a pin. So I'm going to go through and pin all those three things together. So the front layer, the back layer, and the zip. And repeat on this side, keeping it perpendicular like so. Cool. Alrighty, so with this done, I'm going to grab my machine and drag it down. And I have a zipper foot on her at the moment, so let me just quickly change to my normal sewing foot. Jean's needle is in there, and I've got some thread that's a little bit harder to see today, but I wanted to make a nice little finished item. So I've gone with a color that actually matches my fabric for a change. Alright, so this edge here is well away from these little metal pieces because that's what we don't want to hit with our needle and we're going to simply run the edge of the fabric here along the right edge of the foot so pop it down here like so now <laughs> i have rather notoriously run aground by not going backwards and forwards in previous projects when i should have but this one here i'm going to play it safe and i'm going to go backwards and forwards it's not really necessary but i don't want to make another on-camera gaff so just peeking under my phone to stitch this as i get closer take out the pin and get onto the needle oh, sorry onto the zipper take out the next pin as i sew over the zip so i'm going over the teeth now and as you can see no dramas at all and I'm going to hold down reverse and just go back the way I came right across the full width of the zip and then to the end I'm just going to backwards and forwards and stop so that is one end of the zipper tab done now it doesn't look very impressive right now I know but it will do when we finish I promise next thing we got to do is remove this little metal guy so it doesn't get us into trouble so we don't hit it with our needle so we're simply going to go along and Chop it. Done. And we're going to throw those in a little bin, which I have here next to me. And that is one end done. Cool. So now that uh, end is sorted, the next thing we want to do is just fold these out of the way. So fold it up. If you have your iron, you can go ahead and iron it. I'm just going, oh, I should use my press. Where is it? Oh. There we go. I can't find my press, but I'm going to use this guy instead. And we just want to set this here so that it's tucked and folded up on itself like so and again we can go back to our wonder clips because we aren't holding it all together under the foot anymore and we're going to clip this little guy out of the way done now how to get the length right length of the finished zip has to include these tabs. These tabs are going to be involved in what's going on. And we don't want this much tab. We want like this much tab. So we take our zip and pop it up here. And this is the body of our little purse. So this is the finished width of our little purse here. So I am going to probably use the lining piece, which is the same size, just because it's a little bit more malleable because it hasn't got weft on it. And I'm going to fold it in thirds across the width. Fold it into thirds, like so. And then, here, where this third meets this third, so one, two, three, at this point here, I'm going to put another little wonder clip to mark that. So rather than doing the maths, we have just found one third here of our total distance, and two thirds here is going to be the zip. So now that you have this distance worked out, you can go ahead and line up I might just move this little wonder clip around the corner. You're going to line up your zip with this edge of the fabric here and with your marking pen, where did it go? There. We're going to go ahead and just mark here on the zip. So that gives us the length of our actual zip zip part of the tab zip. Set the body part aside. Here's our line here. We are going to close this zipper up out of the way and this is 
where we are going to sew for our next other end of the tab, which means we want to give ourselves about this much seam allowance, about a centimetre. So I'm going to mark a nice big heavy centimetre line just one step out to the right or the outside of where we want to sew and then get our tab fabrics again and I might go fat wise that way line it up with this new line we've made line this up with the new line we've made like so and then repeat with our zip, uh, zip our pins and pin all three layers together now again make the effort to keep it parallel if it wobbles around while you're moving it just stop for a second and keep it straight which is why we use two pins not one because it helps us keep it actually straight so your zipper looks nice and neat and we've moved this pull right over here so it is out of the way all right let's do it again so down we come zoom out and line up edge of the fabric against the edge of the foot couple of stitches forward and when we get to about here out comes this pin and then over the zip we go just before we get to the teeth out comes the next pin and remember we want to go backwards over where we've already sewn just for a bit of security and then forwards again get to the end and we are done and then this Oh, gets pushed aside and here is the other half of our zipper tabs fold that over give it a bit of a press with my little hair marker today can't find my finger press like so and that's our zipper tabs done so what this means now is that we have no zip in the way of our seams so our seams don't get all bulky from the zip so I've cut the zip away from this end to get rid of the middle ends here we don't need any of this zip anymore because the fabric's going to do the job for us so we are going to chop it i love these little black scissors they're like five bucks each and i have like 20 of them lying around the house and they're the sharpest little things all right so fold it back out so now you can see we have our zipper and our tabs on either side all right so next i'm going to use a couple more wonder clips and just hold this open Take it to an iron is probably ideal, but the iron is all the way over there and it's one of those irons that resets if I don't use it all the time. So if I ran over and tried to iron it, I'd have to wait for it to heat back up. So I'm just going to stick with my finger pressing for now and leave that as it is. Alrighty, so next thing, we need to put this so that it becomes part of the thing that we're making here. Cool, that's where it's going to go next. So what we need to do here is do, 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 find the center of this and line it up with the center of this so fold this in half and again nothing mathematical about it, just fold it in half find that center point just there and i'm going to pop myself a little pin into that spot that's halfway on the zip find the halfway mark on my bit of fabric like so and another little pin or oh, wonder clip could do it like so and we now have the halfway mark here and we also want the halfway mark on our front pieces because that's where the zip is going to be sewn so also finding the halfway double checking oh a little bit of heartbreak here i think i used the wrong piece that's <laughs> when i did here we go is this one wider let me check it out yes okay cool so i'm going to get this and chop it in half lengthways don't look mum I'm not measuring it or anything I'm just going to straight up fold it in half and chop it sorry guys I grabbed the wrong bit when I was doing my little test before we started done all right so these ones here are going to be where the zip gets put so we need to find the halfway mark on those as well so get these little devils out of the way fold that in half like so I have the worst habit whenever I do dressmaking, I always end up not being able to find my facing for my neck or something. So then I recut the facing and then I find I cut it out of a sleeve. <laughs> so I end up wasting all this fabric. And I think that's what I did before. I think I used my main fabric to cut my um, tabs out of. All right. So half and half again. Now, if this fabric was directional, the birds are facing up and down in a particular way, which it's not, it's a little bit of a mismatch. I would need to make sure that the birds were facing so when you turned it out, they were pointing up or pointing down. I'm not too stressed about that with this print. 
put this aside for the minute and we are going to go ahead now and take our zipper with our tab and line up the center of the zip with the center mark in the fabric like so see that i think i was off camera then i think i was looking away and i pulled under the camera but we've lined the center up with the center of the uh zipper and now we want to put a little wonder clip to hold it in place and uh, another little wonder clip down here to hold it in place boom like so now we want to put the lining on too so here is our lining piece so it is right sides together now i know i have before quite famously puzzled myself as to which is the way to go but this is definitely i assure you right sides facing right sides outside the fabric facing the right side of the zip now this is your lining and we want right sides also and just line your lining up with the outside piece like so we can take out this guy here and then just reposition your clips like so now i would typically 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 recommend that you stitch your lining first then come back and do your outside fabric but we're pushed for time tonight so i'm going to do it all in one go so now these wonder clips they can come right up here out of the way like so and we are going to reach in underneath this pin can come out and just move this zipper head down to the bottom because we don't want to start right on that zipper head and we're going to go up to our machine and change feet to a zipper foot now your zipper foot we're working on the left so we want to use the left side of our zipper foot click it on and we are going to pop everything. So all three layers are here. And go up under the zip like so. Now with these brother zipper feet, pretty much if the edge of this foot is running on the edge of the fabric, that's spot on for my zip. So I'm going to go ahead and just start sewing. And I'm going to go backwards and forwards again to hold that down. Alrighty, and then we're just going to sneak forward. Now we've got lots of layers going on, and we talked last video about a walking foot for lots of layers, but obviously with your zipper foot, you can't use a walking foot unless you have some of those big flash genomies. Your big, huge genome machines actually have a zipper foot you can put on your built-in walking foot. But we are using our zipper foot, and if you are worried, oops, moved out a little bit. If you're worried about movement, you can actually change your foot pressure. So adjust how firmly the foot of the machine presses down, and that will reduce some of the drag if you have foot pressure adjustment in your machine. Alrighty, so we're gonna stop about here and stop with the needle down, lift the foot up. So the needle's holding it all in place. Turn it sideways so that you can see it and get into it. And we wanna just slide this zipper up and out of the way. Cool? So needle's down, holding it all in place. If you can't get that zipper out, there's nothing wrong with stopping, going backwards and forwards, getting your fabric out, sliding the zipper, and then picking up where you left off you can't get that zipper pull through all right so i'm going to keep on sneaking through and again we want to go right to the end up and over onto the fabric like so and then backwards and forwards to finish and chop it and then we have that side done oh wrong wonder clip penny let's push that out of the way so here is one half of the zip fold this over here one half of the zip like so cool so that's now stitched down and we have a nice looking little zip and we're going to go ahead and repeat that process we don't have to find the half again because we can just line these edges up with the edges on the other side line it up with our zip see that and then flip it over and do the same thing with our lining so right sides facing down but before we do that Let's get that zipper pull out of the way. Back to the bottom. So line this up again, like a saw. Flip it over. Line this up again, right sides together, like so. And let's grab our wonder clips, which I enthusiastically threw all the way back over here into my bucket. So I'll get some more out. 
one and then two so while you're watching this if you could just give me feedback if you prefer the earlier time i don't mind shifting a few things around so that i can come in a bit earlier and do it if it means that you guys can get more benefit out of watching it let me know and don't forget give us a thumbs up as you're watching because it you know, lets me know that you like what i'm doing but also means more people see it so that's cool too all right let's pull this back down and again we're going to go ahead and sew edge of the zipper foot against the edge of the fabric where the tape and everything is all lined up underneath forwards backwards forwards oh i've really put the camera in the wrong spot this time <laughs> okay i can do it right and then off we go so my stitch length has remained the same it's 2.5 and i have like i said a denim needle in here instead of a normal needle just because i was sewing through the zip now i'm going to show you what i mean about getting that zipper head out of the way if you can't pull it underneath so i'm just going to go backwards here and stop so that backwards and forwards is important i've cut it i take the zip out completely and i can reach in under here and pull my zipper head out of the way and then back underneath i'm going to overlap where i stopped before and then keep going to the end that might be helpful to be honest if you've got a bit of arthritis in your hands sometimes getting the strength in to grab that zip and pull it through is a bit tricky so that might be more helpful to you and let's go through to the end. So forwards, backwards, forwards to take over where I stopped. And then through to the end. And forwards, backwards, forwards at the end. And chop it. All right, so now what we have, how are we going for time? I haven't got my watch on. Can someone comment the time? I don't know what it is. All right, so now if we open this up here and here, so what we have is this cute little zip in the middle of whatever it is that we're doing. If we were doing a zipper purse, that would then go into the edge and just be the top zip. Cool. This is going to be the front face of a little coin pouch that we're doing. Um, I am going to make the whole thing next week's video. I'm going to show you how to make a little coin pouch, taking this the next step further. And um, we're going to go ahead and make that using a uh French seam as well. Ooh la la. So from here, I'm just going to chop off this excess because we don't need it. And I'm a little bit wobbly there, so I'm just going to trim that off too. And then go ahead and trim off this excess here. And you can see that if we then attach this to another layer of fabric at the back, we have made ourselves a natty little whoop, coin purse that's nice and neat and tidy on the inside and because we don't have the zipper edges going all sorry the zipper teeth going all the way to the edge we'll be able to catch these edges in a french seam to finish it off cool cool all right i think that's done the job for tonight to finish this off i am actually going to go back in and top stitch this lining flat so it doesn't come undone so i'm going to do that as we finish out because that's a really good habit to get into and it stops your lining getting caught in your teeth as you open and close your zip and then this time next week gang um, i'm going to continue on with one of these already pre-made and go ahead and show you how to make a cool little zipper coin purse that uses a French seam and gives you a perfectly neat inside and outside. So do tune in seven o'clock next Thursday night. All right, peeps, thanks for watching and I am out of here. Bye, see you, mum.